Hello and welcome to Revit Beginner Program. Today in this episode, we are going to talk about drawing revisions. How do we manage revisions in Revit? How do we include a revision schedule in a title block? And how do we create revision clouds in our drawings? So let's begin. Now let's start today's session by talking about drawing revisions. Now revisions are generally the modifications that you make after a set of drawings has been issued to your client. So your client already has a set of drawings and now you would like to make any updates to your design drawings and give them another round of updates. So you would mark up your drawings clearly with the areas that has been revised and you mark that submitted drawings as revision one and then onwards any of those kind of updates that you make and so resubmit your drawings to your client that is going to become revision two, three, four and five and so on. So when you go into your view you have something called revisions and in the revisions you have the sequence of your revision which is marked as one. Now this numbering system can be completely customized based on how you are numbering your revisions. For example if I want to make a revision number R1 as my first revision and the second one would be R2, R3, R4. So I want my number to have a revision number with a prefix of R. I can always come here in the customized numbering and create a new set of sequence and saying R number. With this, I'm going to create a numeric system which begins with one, but it has a prefix of R. And I'm going to say okay to this. And I'm going to use R number as my numbering system. So you can see here that revision number is automatically marked as R1. If I go ahead and add another revision, it's going to be R2. Another is going to be R3. So the sequence is going to follow the order that you've specified. I'm going to delete these two revisions at the moment. Now, once we have added a number to our revisions, then it's time to add a date. For example, I'm going to say, okay, this revision has been marked for 12th December 2023. Description of the revision is generally why you are making this revision. Is it the design update? Is it issued for construction? Is it the tender drawings? And so on. So what is the purpose of this revision? So I'm going to say, okay, design detailing. And I'm going to say, okay. Now we have created a revision sequence, but now it's the time that we create a revision cloud in our drawings and mark up all the areas which has been revised in this particular round of revisions. So let's go ahead under annotate and go in a revision cloud. And I'm going to draw up a cloud. For example, I've added this door into this particular design change and I'm going to create over here and finish that. So this particular area is marked as revised. Now there are multiple ways how you can annotate this. The most common way is to add a tag saying if this is R1. So if you have multiple revisions in your drawing, it would be R1, R2, R3. So you know which cloud has been revised and on which revision sequence. So to add a tag, I'm going to go under tag by category and it says that there is no tag loaded for revision clouds. Do you want to load one now? I said yes. And generally, in the default library that you have under annotations, you have a revision tag .rfa already given in a default library. If you don't have one, you can always create your own. I'm going to select and place it here. Now let's say if your revision tag looks something different, you don't have a triangle with a sequence number or you might have a different shape or different size, you can always create your own revision tag. To do this, I will go under File, New, Family and under Annotations, I will go under Generic Tag because I don't have a specific revision tag template here. I will choose a generic tag template and I'm going to read this note which says basically that use properties and family categories parameters to set the tags category. So let's go ahead and uh, this family category and parameters and change this tags category to revision cloud tag. An insertion point is at the intersection of reference planes and delete this note before using. So in this case, I'm going to add a label, which is basically the revision number. I'm going to create the sample value as R10. I like to generally use a value that is going to be the biggest one so you know what kind of geometry to create around it and I'm going to reduce the text size 
Now this is three millimeters. Generally, I like to use are somewhere around two or two point five millimeters. So I'm going to create a two point five millimeters text size for this. And around this, I'm going to use a rectangle, and I'm going to make this a little bit more symmetrical. And I'm going to make it equal. Same on the other side. Okay, so I have my uh, tag available. Another thing I personally like to do when I'm creating revisions is to add another label under the text, which is about comments. And I'd like to make this a little bit smaller, around one millimeter, with a transparent background. How this comment is useful let's check this out so i'm going to save this in my library and i'm going to call it revision tag with comments and i'm going to load it back into my project instead of using the standard default revision tag i'm going to change this to the one that we just created now i do have this rectangle and then with sequence r1 but what i also have underneath is a question mark R1 is basically saying that it's a description, saying it's a design update. But what is the actual change that you've made in that particular tag is not mentioned anywhere. So when you select this particular cloud in its instance properties, you have a parameter called comments. And I can type in something here saying that door added, for example. And when you do this, this particular comment is mentioned under the tag. So every time you make a change, every single cloud, mentions what has been updated in that particular area let's go ahead and create another revision cloud and maybe i create a cloud here and i finish this cloud and i give the cloud a comment saying that um, window sizes updated so your client actually knows what has happened here and then you get create a tag by category which is saying r1 sequence that window size updated in this particular cloud but revision tags are completely customized so it's really up to you what kind of information do you want to mention when you're creating a revision cloud it, now we know how to create a revision sequence we also know how to go ahead and create a revision cloud we also know how to customize a revision tag now it's time to include this revision schedule in our title block so let's go ahead in our sheet when this particular drawing is available but you, here you see that in this custom title block there is no mention of any revisions so i'm going to select my title block edit the family and go into the title block family we talked about how to create a custom title block in my last episode so if you haven't watched that out i'd really recommend that you do now we are here in this family editor and here i'm going to create a schedule of revisions so let's go in the view in the revision schedule it has a few uh, schedule fields already available by default. You can choose the ones that you need. You can remove the ones that you don't need. So I'm going to remove the revision sequence because I'm only concerned with revision number. And then I want my date to be above. And then I want why I have made this revision. So revision description. Another thing I want to do is under formatting, I want to change the headings. I want to say it's not revision number, but just number because it occupies a lot of space on your sheet. I'm going to say, okay, this is date and description is just description instead of revision description. I'm going to create the schedule. So it has a title, a revision schedule. And then you have a first column, which is number. Then you have date and then you have description. Now let's go back to our sheets here in our family editor and then bring this revision schedule by dragging and dropping this particular view and I'm going to place it over here. Before loading into our project, I'm going to just adjust the size of my revision schedule and I'm going to load it into my project and overwrite it. And let's move this title here. Now you'll see that revision sequence number one is automatically added to your revision schedule because this particular view that is on this title block contains revision from that revision sequence R1. Now let's say I create another sheet and add first floor plan which doesn't have any sequence of revisions added onto it. You will see that revision schedule remains empty. As soon as I add an annotation of revision cloud somewhere around in this area, 
you will see that R1 sequence is already added to it. So the revision schedule will automatically detect any revisions in that view and take the revision sequence number from it and add to the revision schedule. Now let's go back to view. Under revisions, I'm going to issue the R1 sequence. So this really means that once this sequence has been issued, no more additional clouds can be created in the sequence, nor the ones that has been created previously can be deleted. So this sequence is now frozen. And I'm going to add one more sequence, which is R2. And this particular sequence, let's say, is going to be issued on 25th December 2023. And this one is for the tender phase. And I'm going to say OK. Now I have another sequence in which I'm going to make changes because now R1 is already submitted to the client. So next time I'm going to create another set of drawings with R2 markup, my client can compare the previous and the this one submissions and see what has been updated. So let's go ahead in this view and I'm going to create an annotation revision cloud. And you will see that because R1 sequence is already issued, by default, sequence number two is active. I'm going to create a cloud here. And I'm going to finish that, annotate it with a tag by category. You can add a comment if you like. It can say um, railing revised. So now I have created an R2 sequence. As soon as you have done that in that view, you will see that revision schedule automatically adds R2 sequence in your schedule. Now, sometimes you have multiple revisions and each time you do not really want to show all the previous revisions that you have marked up in your view. For example, in this particular tab actually belongs to R1 sequence, which I don't want to see when I am issuing my R2 drawings. If you want to hide all the annotations that you've done in your previous revisions, you can simply go to view under revision settings and say, OK, this one is issued. So I don't want to show any clouds and tags which contains R1. So I'm going to say none. Don't show me any clouds. Don't show me any tags. When I say that, you will see that all the clouds of R1 revision has been hidden. It does not mean that it's been deleted. It simply is hidden. And you will still see in the revision schedule that this particular drawing has undergone R1 revision and currently it's going under R2 revision. Now, there's one more thing you need to understand when it comes to revision settings and revision numbering. So far, we have added R1, R2, R3, these kind of revision numbering per project, which means all of these numbers are going to be consistently the same across the project. For example, let's go ahead and add one more revision, which is R3. And let me give you an example of the difference between a per project and per sheet numbering. For now, everything is set to per project. Let's go ahead in the ground floor plan where I have an R1 sequence available. Now I don't have any revision cloud that belongs to R2 sequence in this particular view. However, I have an R revision cloud that belongs to sequence three, which is somewhere around here. So this one belongs to R3. Now I only have R1 and R3. So in my revision schedule, you will see that R2 is skipped, which means the revision schedule shows that R1 uh, changes have been made on 12th December and R3 has been made on this particular date. So there were no updates in this view when we had our R2 revision sequence. Now let's go ahead and view on the revisions and change everything from per project to per sheet numbering. Now you will see here that R1, R2, R3 is gone. Instead, it just says the what is the type of numbering that you are going to use. And I'm going to say OK to this. And you will see here that instead of R3, this particular sheet is saying R2. Although the sequence of this particular cloud is still sequence 3, revision number 3, However, on this sheet, there are only two sequences, R1 and the next one, R2. So R2's date is date 3 and revision 3. However, the sequence numbering is on this sheet is uh, consecutive to the sequence number that is one on the before. Let's try the same thing on the first floor plan, where I have R1, R2, and now, now one more cloud that belongs to R3. I'm going to annotate this. 
and you will see that it is our three as day three. So division three on first floor on this particular sheet number A105 is the third revision on the sheet, whereas, whereas revision three on this sheet A101 is the second revision for this sheet. Revision description and date is going to be the same. However, the sequence number is going to follow how many revisions you've done on that particular sheet. So depending on the practice of your country and how you want to manage your revisions, you can either follow the per sheet numbering or per project numbering. So when you are following per project, the revision number is going to be consistently the same for all sheets. Per sheet is going to follow how many revisions you've made on that particular sheet. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you have any questions, please feel free to write your comments here in this video or please feel free to send me an email in this email address. So in the next episode, we are going to talk about schedules, how to create a door window schedules or a component schedule from your Revit project. So please make sure that you subscribe. Stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one.